I'm about to let you all in on a dirty little secret. And that is, as much as I would love to pretend that I go ahead and script all these shows, lay everything out, have professional camera guys out here filming me, all that stuff, none of that's the case. Actually, the reality is, what I do is the overwhelming majority of these tips are filmed while I'm actually out working on clients' properties that I manage for them. Never before has that been more true than today. Today, and what I do is I just make up the tips as I go along. Hmm, what are the issues I'm running into? If I'm running into them, guess what? Other people are as well. So, today, what we're going to talk about is what to plant. Right back that way is the back finger of a field. Behind me is a glorious wooded ridge, and frankly, the camera is darn near set up in a mineral lick. We're in a state where minerals are perfectly legal. And I'm back here refreshing this lick. The question I'm trying to ponder is, I know Mr. Big is bedded back on the end of that point, right there. Okay, I know that he has choices. He can head that way, he can head that way, or he can head that way to feed, or he can go this way. I want him to go this way. So, what should I plant? That is a question that comes up over and over and over and over and over again. What can I plant to go ahead and make it so he doesn't go that direction, that direction, that direction. Instead, more often than not, he goes this way because I'm gonna go ahead and put a primal ladder up in a cluster of trees right there, hunt it with a wind blowing that way, and this is a slam dunk setup. As Mr. Big takes this ridge out to the food, does a little bit of staging, ladder stand set up that right there, wind going that way, slip in nice and low impact, hunt low impact, slip out, he'll never know I was here. I need him to come this way. He's going to do it by default 25% of the time. I want it higher than that. I want to, I want to make it so it's 50 or higher percent. So what do I plant out there? There is no one single magic bean. Now, um, quite honestly, the, the planting I go for more often than not is Antler King Trophy Clover because, because it feeds deer for so darn long. And you just get such volumes of food. So, hmm, that's a great choice. Yeah, it is, but if you really want to do the max good, with your food plots, offer a smorgasbord. I will be offering trophy clover. I will be offering honey hole. I will be offering um, some soybeans as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and top seed, top seed both the soybeans and that honey hole with three parts fall, winter, spring, a cereal rye, and one part lights out oats. So by doing that now, we have grain. We have clo We have a couple greens, actually. Um, we have clover. We have brassica. We have cereal rye, which is going to go dormant over winter. But every time there's a, there's a thaw, now it's going to spring back to life, offering 15% protein. First thing in the spring, when everything else is dead and brown, that cereal rye will be green and offering 15 plus percent protein. That's huge. That is huge because as much as we talk about over winter, that period between snow melt and spring green up, that's when that's a tipping point for a lot of deer. If we can offer greens one, two, three weeks sooner than nature does it, hey, triple bonus points. So you add all of that together and now we have a whole bunch of different draws because all food sources, every single food source out there has growth stages where it is most desirable and growth stages when it's least desirable. At the same time, the whitetail biology and physiology is changing throughout the course of the year. You know, because of that, their nutritional needs change. So what we're gonna do is we are going to plant a whole bunch of things that goes ahead and offers a smorgasbord that addresses all phases of season and year-round nutrition. Soybeans, great, great summer draw. Same with the clover. Now, those oats, 
and the clover and some of the strains of brassicas in honey hole are all good early season draws. Then we have the soybeans kicking back on once they dry out. We have the we have the cereal rights starting to really get going and getting a great draw. We still have the oats and we have the brassicas for mid-season. Late season we have cereal rye, we have brassicas, we've got grain, we've got the entire pitcher covered. And that is the best possible seed you can plant. Not one, a smorgasbord that addresses it all. Many people are always searching for that magic bean, that one food plot seed that I put this in the ground and it changes everything. There isn't that one seed. Instead, offer a smorgasbord. Offer a smorgasbord that addresses their nutritional wants and needs early season, mid season, late season, and then if you really want to do some good over winter and into spring. Do that and you create a powerful season long draw.